you now. Got you!
direct me to Mistress Tabitha. Thank you very much. My internal clock says it's been six years, 52 days, 40 minutes, and 13 seconds since I last spoke to her. I hope she hasn't gotten lonely. Rhonda? Is that you? It is, Mistress Tabitha. How I've missed you so. This stranger here fixed me up right as rain. Is she a friend of yours? I... don't know how to thank you for bringing Rhonda back to me, stranger. Here, take this. I won't be needing it anymore. I don't know. It's been so long since I lost Rhonda that I'm not sure. Mistress Tabitha, we should be heading off. Our journey has been much delayed, but we can catch up if we hurry. Come along now. Yes, Rhonda. Took you long enough, so can I go now? Sorry, I assume the only reason you'd fight past a horde of super mutants and pick the lock on my cell is if you heard my cry for help on the radio. But maybe you're just sightseeing. 
So since the door's open and all, can I go now? Name's Raul. Raul Alfonso Tejada. I'm the mechanic around here. Probably because it used to be Miguel's. Whoever he was. How about if you let me go, huh, boss? <sighs> no. No, boss. I'm a prisoner of the crazy super mutant with the wig and the glasses. I was kind of hoping you were here to set me free. But maybe I'm not a pretty enough damsel for that. Huh? Alrighty then. I'll just head out, alone, by myself, into the dangerous waste. Anything's better than staying here. Let's go. What can I do for you, boss? Questions, boss? You mean you don't know everything there is to know already? Just how old do you think I am, boss? Because I can pretty much guarantee I'm older than that. Let me tell you a story from before the Great War. Everybody knew Robert House. He was a genius, a superstar. Founded Robco at 22. Dated Hollywood starlets, the works. They say he saved Las Vegas. I was in Mexico City when the bombs dropped. Even from there, we could see House's defensive rockets shooting down the incoming missiles. Everybody assumed he died in the war. Maybe he did. But his robots are still out there roaming the waste. And now, a Mr. House rules New Vegas. Maybe not. Maybe the new guy is just a clever raider chief with knowledge of history. Maybe he just left instructions for his robots to carry out in his name. Or maybe Robert House uploaded his brain pattern into a computer and rules to this day a godless, soulless machine god. Maybe the whole thing's a crazy coincidence. Who knows? I remember there were some weird stories about him, especially near the end. There was a tell-all in El Padiódico de las Arboridas by a starlet house dated. She said they never, uh... Now don't make me spell it out, boss. Anyway, she said all he wanted to do was scan her brain and make her dress up in different outfits. It was quite the scandal, at least in the Latin American tabloid journalism market. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. Benny, huh? Sorry, boss. Doesn't ring a bell. Then again, my brain isn't as sharp as it used to be. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. They're all right, I suppose. Had a bit of a tough going there at the beginning. You know their first town was nearly wiped out by raiders. Anyway, they got their good points and their bad. Just like a lot of the old governments from before the war. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. I don't really have a problem with that. People around here tend to see them as invading marauders planning to burn and pillage the countryside. But I've been to Arizona, boss. Before the Legion, it was a nasty place. So thick with raiders, you couldn't trade with a town two miles up the road. Caesar's laws aren't nice, and their actions aren't always pretty. But then neither am I. But you keep me around. You're a veritable geyser of curiosity, boss. It's big, it's bright, and it's one of the biggest cities still left from before the war. Well, mostly anyway. It used to be just a curiosity. The buildings were pre-war, but it's just as full of raiders and barbarian tribes as any place else. Then Mr. House took over got the power turned back on, and got the tribes reformed into something civilized. And now they run his casinos for him.
Sure, boss. What do you want to know? You forget about me already, boss? You sure you didn't take a blow to the head or something? My name is Raul Alfonso Tejada. Probably because he used to be Miguel's. I'm an open book, boss. Granted, the book's in Spanish and some of the pages have fallen out, but I'm an open book. I was born just outside Mexico City. My family had a little ranch there. I'm an open book, boss. Old enough to know better, boss. Old enough to know better. I'm a you never heard of Petro Chico? Un amigo de Poseidon Energy. Ah, of course not. They were an oil company in Mexico back before the war. I'm an open... Well, boss, when a giant insane super mutant asks you to stay put, you do what you're told. Well, maybe you don't. But I'm just a broke-down old man. It's stupid, boss. I used to listen to the radio broadcast. Just to pass the time. Well, one day the signal stopped. So I figured I'd try to find a transmitter. I'm a pretty good repairman. Or I was before my eyes started to go. Anyway, I found Black Mountain and offered my services. But Tabitha decided I was useful enough to keep around. Permanently. I'm an open... I'm not much use besides being a portable encyclopedia, really. I guess you could use me as a packed Brahmin, but my knees aren't so good anymore. That's nice of you to say, boss, but I'm an old man. Not much use to anybody anymore. Time was, I was a pretty good shot with a pistol. I guess I'm still half decent. These old bones aren't much use in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, though. I can also do maintenance work on your stuff. I don't have the supplies for a real repair job, but I can keep your gear working longer. Yeah, maybe you can introduce them to me, if we find them, because I've never met one. I'm an open book, boss. Anything to hold your attention, boss.
wig is going to haunt my nightmare. Serious. I expect to be awed by your dizzy mercantile sense, boss. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable, boss. Hey there. Need anything? Sure. Here's what I got. Thank you. 
I don't know how you survived the bombardment. That's incredible. I hope Pearl knows what she's doing, letting you wander around Nellis as you please. If that's so, how about you look into repairing the solar arrays on the roof of the generator building? Nothing too complicated about it, but it's a long ways to walk my old bones, and there's been that ant problem over near there. You can't miss the array. It's on top of the generator building smack dab in the middle of Nellis between the two runways. Ha! Huh. If we had spare parts, do you think I'd be asking you to fix the damn things? That's rich. No, we ran out of spares a while back, and Jack and I have been doing our best to patch the arrays up as best we can. Sadly, we're at our wit's end. There have to be spare parts somewhere around the wasteland, but I just don't know where to direct you. You may have noticed we don't get out much. All right, what's on your mind? No, those aren't for outsiders to use. Leave them alone. Well, if you genuinely care so much, they're flight simulators. If you don't know our history yet, you should see Pete and get the tour. We dream to one day rule the skies. I started building a sonic emitter that might do the trick, but it's useless without knowing the exact frequency that would kill the ants. Hot damn, you're right! It's a matter of boosting across those thresholds, not exact amplitude. You're smarter than you look. Just so happens I was testing it at 24,000 hertz, so it should be good to go. Place it near their nest and cross your fingers. Signal's too high for people to hear, so no harm done. But it might make you feel sick to your stomach. McLafferty's a hard boss, but she knows what she's doing, that's for sure. What can I do for you, boss? Sure. That's a good thing to see, huh, boss? That loyal guy. He's getting up there in years, but he still finds a way to make himself useful to his people. If you ask me, that's better than withering away all alone or holding on to some faded piece of glory from your past. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Old history, boss. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands, with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window, but everyone else. My parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters all died. Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home, but I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away on revenge. I know that, boss. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. 
Anyways, forget it. Just wanted that off my chest. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable, boss. What can I do for you, boss? That's what I love about you, boss. Your firm belief that one day you'll actually remember things people tell you. What do you want to hear about? Anything you say, boss. Another glorious day in this man's army.
I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable, boss. Much better. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable, boss.
I see the power's back on. The ants are all dead? Maybe Pearl is right about you. Because I don't know how you pulled that off. I'll tell Loyal to send someone down to clear out the eggs and repair the generators. Good work. Hello, outsider. Need something? An impressive piece of work. I'll keep that in mind if jobs come up in the future. Bye! You have done well to earn the trust of my people, child. I believe the time has come for you to show your value in full. The people have come to accept having you around. Find Loyal and ask him about our people's fondest dream. He will tell you what to do next. Pearl sent word saying it's all right to tell you about the lady in the water. Ain't nothing creepy about it. It's a term of respect. A long time ago, long before the war that killed just about everything that ever lived, a bomber crashed not far from here. A bomber was a flying contraption that could drop explosives down on anything it flew over. But anyway, moving on. This bomber crashed down in Lake Mead, pretty damn near intact. When we got to Nellis, see, I found this article in a magazine all about it. There was another B-29 around here, part of a museum. Couldn't fly, but had a lot of spare parts, see? Get where I'm going? Since I was a young man, I've dreamed of raising that lady from the lake and bringing her back to life. What do you say? It's at the bottom of Lake Mead. I'll mark its location on your Pip-Boy map. Simple. Attach deployable ballast to the plane and float it on up. Here is a remote detonator. Once the ballast is attached to the plane, just hit the detonator from the shore and let buoyancy handle the rest. Maybe you don't understand. Hasn't been one of us, not a one, to set a foot outside Nellis in over 50 years. You come along with your knowledge of the outside, and it seems the time's come to raise the lady after all. Good. Here's the deployable ballast. Go find the plane, attach the ballast, and hit the button. Might try holding your breath. If that doesn't sound good enough, talk to Jack. He was working on a rebreather once. Evening. I've never been so happy in my entire life. I just need some parts from a pressure cooker to create a hermetic seal for the rebreather. 
That's a brilliant idea. I can put that together right now. Here you go. A new rebreather. Don't get blown up.
I can't believe we may see the Super Fortress built in my lifetime. It's going to be a dream come true once you've raised that bomber from Lake Mead. That's tremendous. I'll transmit instructions to the robots to start packing up the plane to bring it back to Nellis. I just told you, the robots are going to handle it. They'll break the plane down into pieces and move it up from Colville Bay in one shot. We've got that covered. It won't be a problem. Let's just say they'll be a little distracted for a while. Hey, I'd better get rolling. Jack and I have a lot of work ahead of us. Really? So we may see our dream of flight soon? Hey. Howdy. Name's Sterling, first recon. Can't say I've seen you before. I'd remember if I had. Got a good memory for faces, landmarks and such too. Comes with practice, that's all. And a lot of scouting from place to place. I call her the Long Caribbean. Didn't always have the scope. I added that myself. Been shooting with her so long, couldn't bring myself to toss her away. Would have felt guilty to part with the old girl. The other snipers used bolt action, but Gorbets reckoned it didn't matter none if I was different. So long as I could hit my targets. Used to be a ranger, one of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waist on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few calves he's stirring up the locals against us. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Hey, got a second to talk, boss? 
meeting Corporal Sterling, well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaqueros. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. I don't think it was as hard hit as DC or Bakersfield, but it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters, already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp. Rafaela laughed for the first time since the bombs had fallen. It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there. Until... Until Rafaela. She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poisoning. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I let my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old Vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel, so I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's not a story, boss.
I expect to be awed by your dizzy mercantile sense, boss. I'm sure you'll be fair and equitable, boss. I expect to be awed by your dizzy mercantile sense, boss. We haven't met yet. You must be new in town. I'm Andy. Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. 
I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. Was. Was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Uh, no, no, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. They're the NCR's finest, a one-man platoon, each of them. You got a job where even thinking about it would scare a man senseless? That's when you bring in the Rangers. And if you see a squad of veterans, guys who are in their black armor, well, you won't find a more beautiful sight. Yeah, twice. Actually, the first time, it was more like half my body. Knocked me out of the Rangers. This time, it's mostly just reminded me how useless I've gotten. A few years back, we get a tip that some Legion slavers were holed up in this burnout house a few clicks from where we were stationed. We get there and it's deserted. No sign anyone's been there. I mean, nothing. As we're leaving, I hear something behind me. I turn around and there's this kid, just skin and bone, and he's looking up at us and he's scared half to death. Been hiding in a closet. I go to grab him out of there and I notice he's holding something in his hand. Something metal. He shuts himself back in the closet, and that's when I see the grenades left by my feet. They do it a lot, the Legion, using kids. They know we'll hesitate. Anyway, that was the first time. Second time, I fell down those stairs in front of the motel, just in case I got to thinking I'd put it all behind me. Huh. <laughs> People don't exactly line up to find out what's in my head. Can't remember the last time someone suggested I knew something worth knowing. You know? Maybe there's something I can do for you. Since you've gone to all the trouble of flattering a crippled old soldier, there's a move we have in the Rangers for knocking an opponent off his feet. Save my butt a bunch of times, maybe it will for you too. Let me show you how it's done. What can I do for you, boss? Sure, boss. Hey. Boy, you picked that takedown right up. I'm impressed. Must have had some prior training, huh? Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. Hey, boss. Can I ask you something? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow, or too injured. Maybe, yeah, I guess you got a point there. Not really, boss, no. I left everything when I left Mexico. My home, my family, my name, even my face. I know it's surprising, boss, but I wasn't always just handsome. As far as the world knows, I was Miguel, and I was okay with that. I headed north for a while and ended up in Tucson. Not Tucson, by the way. Things were good there. Well, maybe not good, 
but better than Mexico City anyway. I found myself a little shack, started fixing things. Oh well, sure, boss. I was always good at fixing things. Some I fixed for the town, some I fixed for other people, some I fixed just for the hell of it. It's a better way to use your hands than killing. And even then, I wasn't getting any younger or faster. I lived there for a long time, kept it myself, didn't get into any fights. Hell, the only reason I even kept my guns oil was professional pride. Get in there, boss. I'd been in Tucson. The locals can call it Tucson all they want, but it's Tucson, damn it. About 75 years when she showed up. Pretty thing you ever saw, boss. Maybe it was just a trick of my senile brain, but I swear she looked just like my Rafaela. Her name was Claudia. She ended up taking work at one of the brothels in town. I never went to her, of course. How could I? But I looked after her in my own way. This was a long time ago, before Caesar's Legion pacified Arizona and brought the Raider tribes to heel. A tribe came into Tucson one day. More a gang, really. Dirty Dave and his six brothers. They were looking for bullets, and I sold some to them. I figured if I did that, they'd leave town before they tore it up too much. No, boss. No, they didn't. As I was saying, I hope they'd leave the town in peace. Instead, they decided to stop at Claudia's brothel to take the edge off. I don't know which one of them got rowdy first, but by the time I heard the screams and got my guns, it was too late. They shot up the brothel, killed four girls, and taken Claudia for their sport. I went after Dave and his brothers. They had a head start, but they slept nights. I didn't. It took me three days to catch up to them. Claudia was dead when I got there. They put a bullet in each of her eyes. I couldn't do anything except the Avenger, just like Rafaela. I charged into the middle of their camp and started firing. Two of them were dead before they knew I was there. The other five, though, they shot the shit out of me. I would have died, I think, if I wasn't so full of rage. By being a meaner old cuss than the rest of them, boss. I wanted to keep living until they weren't. So I just kept shooting until they were all dead. I was in pretty bad shape in the end, though. I don't know how long I laid there, with the sun baking me and the buzzers chomping at me. Eventually, I got the strength to start moving. Some long time after that, I managed to drag my carcass back to town. When I recovered, more or less anyways, I left Tucson and headed west. I ran into Tabitha at Black Mountain, and well, the rest you know. I swore I was done with the gunslinging life. I was too old, too slow, and too beat up to protect anyone anymore. I thought I was done forever, but after traveling with you, I realized I've always had my doubts about whether I still had what it took to carry my pistols proudly, to use them to do what's right. And now that I've been traveling with you for a while, you made me realize that I can still do that. Maybe I'm not as tough as I used to be, but my brains can make up for that, and my hands are still quick enough. It's time to put the guns back on. I suppose you're right, boss. These bones are too old for that kind of action. Hey, boss.
You can bet on that, boss. What can I do for you, boss? Good call. I mean, if that's what you really want, boss. That's why you're the boss. You always make the right decisions. I'll just head home. Home to my lonely abandoned shack. In the middle of nowhere.
Any word on Station Charlie? What? What happened? God damn it! I just spoke to them the other day. If this is some kind of sick joke, nah, that'd be too far. Even for those guys. Listen, this could be trouble for all of us. Whoever did this is still out there, and they might come this way. If you can find out who did this, we can be better prepared to deal with them if they come through here. Look out for yourself. Primwim down and accepted in CR rule. Some people will do anything to feel safe.
Oh, it's you. You need something repaired or something? You got the caps, I got the skills. Welcome, sir or madam. Do you wish to purchase something? Come back and see us again soon.